coming up on today's show. A pre-production Lucid Air sedan sets a 9.9 second quarter mile time. Tesla announces a $5 billion capital raise after a successful five from one stock split. And Ford takes its one-off electric Mustang Cobra to the drag strip for some serious fun. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another episode of Transport Evolved News. Thanks for letting me have a week off last week following my trip down to San Francisco. And I'm back and ready to get you up to speed with the latest news in clean cars and transportation. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. In about a half week's time, Lucid will finally unveil the production version of its air electric sedan. And yes, as some of you guessed, I was down in San Francisco last week getting an early sneak peek and filming with one. Although you won't get to see that video until next week. Since our last episode of this show, Lucid has revealed more details about the Air, including its 113 kilowatt hour battery pack, as well as share video of a pre-production Air taking on both a Tesla Model S and a Porsche Taycan at the drag strip. Managing a 9.912 second quarter mile time at a terminal velocity of 144.4 miles per hour, the Lucid Air is now laying claim to being the world's fastest production sedan. Or rather it will be, when it enters into production. After months of delays and setbacks, Volkswagen is finally shipping initial batches of ID3 electric hatchbacks to dealerships across Europe. While customer deliveries have not apparently started quite yet, trucks, trains and ferries have all been carrying ID3s across the continent, and it's likely that deliveries will start in the next few days. Unlike many production launches where customers in the UK and Ireland have found that right-hand drive versions are delayed a few weeks or perhaps even months compared to their left-hand drive counterparts, there are now confirmed pre-delivery ID3s sitting at and making their way to dealerships in both nations. If you're getting an ID3 in the next week, I would love to hear from you. So reach out in the comments and let us know what you think of your brand new car. As we often note on this channel, news stories often depend on how they're interpreted by those reporting the news. And this next story illustrates that perfectly. That's because one outlet this week reported that What Car Magazine in the UK had rated the Tesla Model 3 as the most reliable electric and executive car on sale today, while another reported that the very same survey ranked Tesla as the third least reliable brand. But both are actually true. The survey, constructed using feedback from more than 13,000 readers of the magazine, shows Model 3 owners reporting very few problems, while those who have Model S and Model X cars are reporting far more, hence the split between the top and the bottom. The survey only covers cars up to five years of age, and I should note that Model 3 has only been on sale in the UK for about 15 months. The Porsche Taycan, with its high performance capabilities and similarly high sticker price, may not be the first car you would think of as needing a boost in production, especially during a global pandemic where millions of people are struggling to keep their homes and their jobs. Yet this week, we learned that demand for the Porsche Taycan is so high that Porsche's sibling company, Audi, is lending it 200 staff for the next two years so that it can increase production of the four-seat sports sedan. Porsche, like most prestige brands, has a production volume that's far lower than most mainstream automakers, but it now plans to boost production beyond the 40,000 cars per year it had planned for earlier this. Next year, Porsche says it will begin production of its Taycan Cross Turismo, a model that was pushed back a few weeks ago due to COVID-19. Another Volkswagen Group brand, Skoda, unveiled the production version of its Enyaq 4 electric car this week. One of the first electric wagons to go on sale in Europe, the Czech brand says the Enyaq 4 will ship with a choice of rear or all-wheel drive, with three different battery sizes and five different power outputs, ranging from 109 kilowatts to 225 kilowatts. Based on the same MEB platform as the Volkswagen ID3 and the Volkswagen ID4, 
the Enyaq 4 will go on sale in the spring of next year, with a range-topping model offering 510 kilometers of range on the WLTP test cycle. Pricing and rollout plans have yet to be released, but expect a 1,895 car limited edition production run to precede a mainstream rollout. As many of you will know, Tesla executed its five from one stock split on Monday this week, riding a positive share price that caused the company's value to overtake that of Visa, causing it to become the seventh biggest US company by market cap. And while share prices have fallen since, the stock market has experienced a less than stellar week, Tesla used its gains on Monday to announce a $5 billion capital raise. Not sure what that is? Simply put, the company sold an additional $5 billion worth of shares, which should give it one of the best balance sheets it's ever had. And of course, that will help fund all of those new factories it's busy building around the world. Will the share price continue to rise? Well, maybe. Some analysts are now suggesting Tesla's value could rise by a factor of 100 by the end of this year. Fiat Chrysler hasn't been particularly quick embracing the plug-in world, but this week its Jeep brand announced the third plug-in hybrid, the Jeep Wrangler 4XE. Due to go on sale alongside the Renegade and Compass plug-in hybrids, the Wrangler plug-in hybrid, always seen as a more off-roady vehicle, features a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack and twin electric motors alongside a turbocharged 2-litre gasoline engine. According to the press release announcing the new plug-in hybrid variant, the Wrangler 4XE will offer about 25 miles of range in electric-only mode on the EPA test cycle. It will offer a wade depth of nearly 30 inches and be capable of all-electric off-roading thanks to those dual electric motors. Pricing has yet to be announced. While it's great to see Jeep finally plug in, it's a shame that range is a little on the small side, but as I've said before, if it gets more people plugging in, that is a good thing. Every new car has a period following its launch where bugs and problems not spotted in the factory surface in the wild, and sometimes it can take months or even years for all of those teething problems to be sorted out. But this week we heard of a new problem with the Tesla Model Y that's just a little disturbing. Two cases of missing nuts in the lower ball joint on brand new Model Ys. The current theory circulating is that they were incorrectly tightened at the factory and fell off between the factory and the owner's driveways. But given the issue surfaced earlier this year and in fact last on Model 3s as well, suggests that this is a more entrenched problem with the Model Y and Model 3 production line that does deserve some attention. We've reached out to Tesla for comment, but we have yet to hear back. At more than seven years old, the BMW i3 is what most auto industry insiders would consider an elderly model desperately in need of a refresh. And while BMW has already killed the i8, it is said several times there's no immediate plan to kill the i3 or produce a new variant. This week, we learned that, despite COVID and mediocre sales performance in some markets in recent years, BMW has actually ramped up production of the i3 for the second half of this year far larger than its original planned 2020 production volume. Why is this? Well, in part, it's got to do with the fact that Germany has recently revised its incentive programs for electric cars. This means there's never been a better time to buy an EV in Germany. This, plus a larger capacity battery pack, means that more people are looking at the i3 than they used to. And now it's time for short shorts. Apple published the first of the trailers for the long-awaited Long Way Up, starring Ewan McGregor, Charlie Borman, and both the Harley-Davidson Livewire and Rivian R1T. The series will debut on September 18th, and I'm in the middle of reviewing the series, so keep your eyes peeled for a review soon. Ford's dealership training for the Mustang Mark E is in part targeting Tesla. According to slides shared on the MarkEClub.com, dealers are being encouraged to emphasize the price differences between the Mark E and both the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y. Volkswagen has trademarked the name E-Thing, which suggests that maybe, just maybe, an off-road electric tribute to the original Volkswagen Thing is on the way. We've already seen a concept along those lines in the form of the ID buggy, but I'm not sure we'll see it in production anytime soon. Tesla and Canadian firm Ingenext are continuing their game of cat and mouse over harder alternative unlocks for Model 3 and Model Y performance. 
Tesla has detected and blocked Nginx's hardware, but now the company has launched its Nice Try module to avoid detection by Tesla. Volkswagen published interior shots of its ID4 electric SUV this week, as well as opening the order books for pre reservation in the US. For $100, you can secure yourself a place in the queue, but that doesn't actually mean you've got a confirmed reservation. Tesla is expected to make an announcement during its Battery Day presentation this month, which will outline a whole new production line process to essentially streamline how all of its electric cars are made. This new process is first expected to be adopted at Tesla's new Giga Berlin. Volta trucks have officially unveiled their first vehicle, the Volta Zero delivery vehicle. Designed for inner city routes, it promises a range of between 95 and 125 miles per charge. Production is slated to start in 2022. Following a nasty crash during practice for the annual Pikes Peak race that totaled its race-prepared Model 3, Unplugged Performance and Randy Pobst managed to pull off the impossible, rebuilding the car in just one day and coming second in the exhibition class for the annual race. In first place was another Model 3. A Honda and General Motors have long collaborated in the electric and hydrogen fuel cell world, and this week the two firms signed a new Memorandum of Understanding to establish an even stronger strategic alliance in North America, so expect more EV collaboration soon. Mercedes-Benz delivered 1,800 electric vans to Amazon in Germany this week as part of the company's commitment to having a 100% zero-emission electric fleet. This is great news for Amazon, but Amazon, how about you pay your employees a bit more too, eh? Ken Block took to the Rallycross racetrack in Sweden this week, driving the all-electric starred Ford Fiesta ERX to victory in the first stage of this year's World RX Project E. He also took some time to film with the car, and we can only look forward to more fun this season. The Rebel Rally has announced a new class for this year specifically for plug-in and hybrid vehicles, and Rivian has already signed up to compete with its R1T electric pickup. Given the fact that it sent two pre-production R1Ts on the long way up, I'd say it's ready to race. Quantum Scape, the solid-state battery firm backed by Volkswagen, has become the latest company this year to enter into the stock market through a special reverse merger with a specifically built acquisition corporation. It eventually aims to commercialize solid-state batteries. Pipistrelle, one of the world's leaders in electric aviation, has just unveiled its fully autonomous Nuva cargo plane, capable of vertical takeoff and landing. These electric delivery vehicles could pave the way for future commercial operations. The US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has launched a new tool designed to give extra transparency to autonomous vehicle test programs. It shows all of the self-driving vehicles being tested around the US and what they look like, just in case you're curious. Chinese firm Ehang has debuted another EV toll drone this week, but unlike its last one, which focused on transferring medical supplies, this new one, the Ehang 216 AAV, is a firefighting drone. It's really clever, but I'd like to see some of these drones in production. Genovation GXE, a vehicle that's already got a lot of attention, including from Joe Biden, was celebrating this week after letting Randy Pobbs, yes, the same driver who raced up Pikes Peak in a Model 3, set an unofficial EV course record at Thunder Hill West. How fast? Well, they were 13 seconds faster than the previous record. Neo Charge has officially started taking orders for its specialized outlet splitter and doubler for EVs. Designed to let you charge two cars from one outlet or share a charging station with an appliance plug, we reviewed it earlier this year, so if you haven't watched that review, do check it out. Azobo, a Dutch startup, has launched a unique new project in Mbita in Kenya, which it helps will rent out electric torpedo outboard motors to local fishermen. The program includes maintenance and solar-powered battery charging, which is far better for the environment than the smelly two-stroke engines previously being used. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Hyundai and its sister company Kia have always had some rather interesting ideas about how to advertise their vehicles. Of course, there's the Kia Soul hamsters, which I believe have now been retired. 
not to mention the Kona car wash ad and that banned Velostar ad featuring the Grim Reaper and the fact that the Velostar doesn't have a door on the driver's side at the rear. But we've now got a new one to listen to, K-pop. You see, Hyundai, being a Korean firm, has enjoyed a long-standing relationship with K-pop boy band BTS and has leveraged their vocal talents to advertise the recently announced Ionic all-electric sub-brand. Yes, there's an entire song devoted to it called I'm On It, and no, I'm not on it. And finally, Ford's electric vehicle push has really ramped up somewhat over the summer, and while the Mustang Mark E hasn't yet launched, that hasn't stopped Ford's performance arm from doing some pretty impressive EV-related stunts. So far this summer, we saw the tease and then subsequent reveal of the seven-motor Mustang Mark E 1400, and now Ford has published a short clip showing its previously unveiled four-motor Ford Mustang 1400 Cobra, yes, the one that's a one-off electric conversion of the classic Ford Mustang, let itself rip on the drag course. Racing at the NHRA US Nationals, it managed a quarter mile in 8.27 seconds at 168 miles per hour. It's unlikely we'll ever see this particular car go into production. It was built with help from Cascadia Motion. But that's not really the point. This is a halo car designed to really light some tires and fires among traditional internal combustion engine fans. And I think it really does that, don't you? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship today. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, where to attend local monthly meetups, or just find EV owners to talk about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do feel able, please consider supporting us using any of the links below. If you can't support us though, just know that watching and interacting with our content here really helps the algorithms. So if you do that already, thank you. I'll be back next week with more great content, but until then, I hope you have a great weekend, stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live, strive for equality, be most excellent to one another, wash your hands, wear a mask, and yes, if you are eligible to vote this November, please do make sure you're on the voter roll, eh? If you do not vote, you don't get to complain about the outcome. Keep evolving.